Hello everyone, once again from the Tory dystopia of the United Kingdom. Now, the United Kingdom has a terrible history of colonialism, and of course that includes the treatment of Native Americans, and what happened afterwards is the US government took this a step further and basically tried to wipe out all Native Americans that lived in North America. But something I talked about recently was US conservatives basically gleefully saying that this was a good thing, that they actually liked this. And people like Matt Walsh tweeted that, you know, the natives were savages. I'm glad we killed them all. You have him also saying stuff about them being like completely backwards and how he won't apologize for what the US did, saying that basically the people who did this were heroes. He literally said that in a video, right? Conquest and colonization and settling of this land was overall a good and noble and courageous thing. It is good that it happened and we should be grateful for it. The people who came here and claimed this land were heroes. It was heroic. And they were heroes not because of the other good stuff, but because they came and claimed it. And of course, if you know your history, you know leading people in Germany during World War II, they also loved what the Americans did and they wanted to replicate it in Eastern Europe. So if you subscribe to the ideology that, I don't know, like, wiping out an entire group of people to create a settler colonial state is a good thing, then yes, you probably are a fascist. And this video kind of combines two videos I've made recently. It's the video where I outlined this and outlined how American conservatives literally aren't even pretending anymore, completely mask off fash. But then we have another element of Elon Musk's Twitter, really just allowing the most horrible people to have the most visible takes. Now, recently, a new game got announced on Steam and you play as an Aztec warrior and you fight against Spanish conquistadors. And all the comments are basically saying that, can we play as the Spanish? And I want to play as the Spanish because it was a good thing all those savages were wiped out. And then there is an added element, which I'm going to discuss as well, is that the Aztecs were the dominant empire at the time in the region. So they subjugated a lot of other native groups who actually fought with the Spanish. And people keep making this point like, yeah, the Aztecs were really, really bad. Spanish, the good guys. And because some native groups joined with them to fight the Aztecs, then that proves it. But then what did the Spanish do to the other natives once the Aztecs were defeated? Do you want to talk about that? Even if you're a person who thinks in that situation, the Spanish are the good guys, how can you say the Spanish are the good guys considering what they did for the next 400 years in Latin America? But we are going to talk about all of this today. And also there's one more interesting thing to note. Because obviously as a history graduate, I talk about history on this channel a fair bit. Often popular myths about history get made into absolute facts. And because obviously no one really does history to a higher level apart from people who are really passionate about it at university and stuff. So they don't really understand how history is written. There's extracts from this book I read um, in university. It's called like the Gesta Francorum. It's written by a Norman knight during the First Crusade. And he talks about his leader called Bohemond. He talks about the crusade, the battles they fought. And then he went on to talk about when they first encountered a mosque. And he said there were statues of the Prophet Muhammad everywhere. And they, you know, smashed them up because they were idols. But obviously, if you guys know anything about Islam, you just know there weren't statues of Prophet Muhammad everywhere. Because in Islam, they don't have idols. They can't even draw the Prophet. So why did that guy write it like that? He wrote it like that to make the Muslims seem worse. And when it comes to the Aztecs and the natives and all the stuffs about them being like completely rabid cannibals, this is a myth which was perpetuated by Spanish people who conquered them. Not saying it didn't happen, but as you're going to see, a lot of the comments reference like, it was a good thing the Spanish conquered them because the natives were all cannibals. But this is a myth which was actually written by Spanish people who settled the new world in a very brutal fashion. So we're gonna talk about all of this today. Please like the video. Let me know what you guys think of this game. And let me know if you guys have ever wanted a game set in this time period. I actually have always wanted Assassin's Creed to be set in 1500s, like Mexico or South America. But I would want the player character to either be like Connor from Assassin's Creed 3, where he is like half native, half European, or just be like a Native American 
fighting back against colonialism. Like, I think that'd be really cool. Also, follow me on social media, at The Cavernacle, on Twitter, but also on Instagram. Instagram is just a generally better place to engage with me. Also, post a lot about my travels, which are archived in the highlight reels. Also, consider becoming a patron. Got some exclusive content on there. You, you get access to the Discord server, and you get access to my Nintendo Switch friend code. And also, some podcast episodes will be exclusive on Patreon. So if you care about any of that stuff, trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible. So go check that out and also check out the subreddit and check out my second channel. All of these things are down in the description. So IGN posted uh, the trailer for this game on Twitter. And this is where this all comes from. And my tweet basically saying, read the comments, US conservatives are Nazis. This got like 17,000 likes because of how insane the comments were and how disgusting they were. But anyway, the game is called Ikumene Aztec, probably butchered the first word, a third-person survival action RPG announced. Developer Giants Craft has announced that this game is a new third-person survival action RPG set for PC in 2025. You play as an Aztec trying to withstand the assault of Spanish conquistadors in your Mesoamerican city. Giants Craft promises a strong narrative, RPG progression with blood sacrifices, gritty combat, stealth gameplay, and crafting. So I'm just gonna play you a couple clips of the trailer, and then we're gonna talk about it a bit more. So I don't think that necessarily looks amazing, but it is a cool premise for a game, one that I probably would enjoy. My one like criticism or concern is who is making this game? Like I know that Aztec Empire fell a long time ago, but if there isn't a lot of input from actual like native peoples from Mexico, I would be a bit suspect. Like people can criticize Ubisoft all they want, but their depiction of like native culture and how much natives were actually involved in crafting that is like pretty commendable, even though the story of Connor siding with like the American revolutionaries is very, very weird. But like the language, the stuff of the Mohawk tribe, even in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, slight spoiler, you also have some of that too. So I hope there is some input. It's talking about like blood sacrifice and stuff like that. And I don't want them to necessarily shy away from the brutal history and the brutal elements of like native culture back then. I also don't want them to add to racial stereotypes and unhealthy myths about Aztecs and native groups in this time period. Yeah, it's all well and good to say natives versus colonialists and stuff like that. But at the same time, if this is like a bunch of like white Americans making this without any input from historians and people who are descended from different native cultures in Mexico, for example, then yeah, I would be pretty suspect about how tasteful this game is going to be. But nevertheless, you saw the trailer, you see a native person fighting back against Spanish conquistadors, probably depicting some of the many battles fought between them. But like I said, don't worry on Twitter, people like using this as an excuse to just be insanely racist and start saying that, yeah, killing all these people was actually a good thing. And like I said, we'll get into the nuance about the war between the Aztecs and various different tribes. Let's get into the tweets. So yeah, my original tweets, and some people getting mad saying not every single thing is fascist adjacent. Um, it's dumb to call everyone you don't agree with fascist. People praising Spanish conquistadors are just dumb conservatives who love imperialism. I mean, is there really a difference between that? But now let's get into the comments. I'm gonna read a lot of them. I'm probably gonna edit it down. Uh, to get some of the worst ones. And also, like I said, links back to my Elon video, all of these people pay for Twitter. 
So there's a massive correlation between people who are fascist and people who pay for Twitter. And also one more thing to note, these people probably don't consider themselves like far right in any way, just like American conservatives. But like I said, there is a lot of precedent for this type of ideology to be present in fascist movements. Can you be the conquistadors? Can you play the part where the Aztecs are savagely sacrificing children and the Spaniards are the good guys? You know, real history. So even if you think the Aztecs were terrible, like they were just the worst native group for their barbarity, thinking the Spanish are the good guys in the situation of brutal European colonialism, which also was built on African slavery and basically putting the natives into some like brutal form of like work contract, which was basically slavery to build your like plantations and mines and stuff. That's the good guys. Again, like I said, far right people here. What if I want to play the conquistadors because there's no point in playing the losers? It would be way cooler if the roles were reversed. And all of these are thousands of likes. Sorry, but the human sacrifices will stop. 14,007k likes. And of course, like I said, this is just like a dog whistle hiding behind something. Yeah, the Aztecs did that. Lots of native groups did that. Lots of pagan groups have done that throughout history. I don't think these people apply the same logic to Scandinavian Vikings, who also did this, by the way, and did this brutality. It's because it's natives and they're using this to try and demonize them to justify colonialism. And they basically make it seem like everyone in native society totally agreed with this. No one wanted to get rid of it. Not all native groups did this. And also it reminds me of just a justification for colonialism like throughout history. So I talked about this before. In India, there was a practice of sati, where often if a man died, um, his wife would be burnt on the funeral pyre alive with them. When the British colonized India, they outlawed this, and they basically used it to justify their colonialism, saying these Indians are backwards, barbarians, they need to be ruled by us because clearly they're so immoral. Completely ignoring that loads of people in India had been trying to get rid of it for like centuries, and different Indian empires actually did ban it as well but they didn't care. They just used it to paint all Indians as people who totally agreed with this practice, therefore justifying their colonialism. And this is what these guys are doing here. But because the Aztecs did that, most native people at the time deserved to be wiped out by the Spanish. So the child sacrifices are the good guys in the game. Lamau, no, I want to play as a conquistador. Can I play as the good guys? Cernovich, obviously a fascist himself, does this version include ritualistic child sacrifice. Sorry, but the human sacrifices will stop. Obviously loads of Pepe the Frog memes coming here with verified accounts. Can I play as the Spanish? Hmm, so you only kill Spaniards. If so, that'll be a short game, seeing as there are only a handful there. I didn't see a single kill on any of the thousands upon thousands of other natives that helped the Spanish against the Aztecs. Does this game include the 100,000 plus allies the Spaniards had when they sacked the Aztec Empire? Can we roleplay the Spaniards sacking the Aztecs and putting an end to their mass sacrifice? I want to play as the Conquistador. The upgrade stop at loincloths and smallpox resistance, so the cannibalism must stop meme i think that's meant to be christopher columbus as well and i tweeted this guy's profile out this is amazing right look at this guy's profile he has his face on it he has his like live streaming thing on instagram and he paid for twitter and he writes will it also have a child sacrifice feature nothing quite captures the barbarity of the aztecs i'd much prefer to play the conquistadors who wiped these savages out like again his face is there everything's linked he has no problem talking about how he wants to role play the conquistadors, like killing native people. Before the white man came, Americans lived in peace and harmony, posting more memes. So it's like predator, but anti-white. And then Eomar's Chong saying, I want to play as the conquistadors because they rallied the tribes against the Aztec oppressors and brought civilization to these heathens. And again, like I was saying earlier, right? They're using this as cover to say they liked what the Spanish did. If you remove all context and just look at the war between the conquistadors other native groups and the Aztecs. See how they exploited rival tensions to basically conquer Latin America. But again, he's talking about bringing civilization to these heathens. Does he think the other native groups were civilized? Of course he doesn't. None of these people think the other natives were civilized. They don't want to say they agree with all of colonization. And like I said, it's a complete fascist mindset. Think of all the terrible things the Spanish and Portuguese did to South and Central America. So many millions killed. All the slave labor they brought in. 
from African countries as well. All the natives they killed, not just through obviously bringing disease, but just, you know, putting in these brutal conditions, completely like erasing their culture, right? These people want to say they like that. These people want to say that's good, but it's a convenient dog whistle. It's a convenient thing to hide behind. Oh, well, you're playing as an Aztec in that game. And didn't some natives not like those Aztecs? So conquistadors actually good just don't talk about anything they did like right after they won against the aztecs i'm not going to read too many more but it's just the same sentiment can i play as the good guys i want to play as the spaniards not the savages i want to play as the spaniards not the savages again i'd rather play the conquistadors yeah depressing to read all of that like one of the few games where you play as an aztec native warrior fighting against conquistadors everyone just uses it as an excuse to talk about why they think colonialism was actually super good Spanish conquistadors are good. Can you imagine the mindset you have to have to believe that? Even the basic level of history when talking about these things, if you've read any accounts of Spanish settlers, they do not hide their brutality. They write it in because they're proud of it. And as we're gonna talk about, they do not see natives as people. These people will talk about child sacrifice. These people will talk about cannibalism. And the reason they're doing that is to justify even worse things done by the Spanish conquistadors. Because yeah, if we admit that the Aztecs had some brutal elements to them, including the things they're listing, the Aztecs was a relatively young empire. It didn't last that long. The colonization of the new world by the Spanish lasted for far longer. They killed far more people, did terrible things, absolutely terrible things, just because it wasn't something like the Vikings or the Aztecs would do, like, you know, human sacrifice, which is taboo in Christian culture, then apparently they're better. Apparently they're better, even though the body count doesn't stack up. So now I wanna go into talking about the actual history of this stuff to just show you how like insane these people are, but also just an interesting comment on just like how they use a certain element of native society to justify the most atrocious barbarism in the 16th century and onwards. And an article I was reading today by John R. Pittinger from Gettysburg College um, from January 2020. What good can there be in this kind of human the Spanish justification for the conquest of the Americas. And this is really interesting because it's basically what these guys are doing, even if they don't really realize it. They're basically saying that everything that befell the natives, obviously they're hiding behind, oh, it's just the Aztecs I hate. Um, they actually deserve because they did things like eat people, human sacrifice, stuff like that. Stuff that plenty of pagan cultures around Europe did. How much has ancient Egypt, ancient Sparta been fetishized by Westerners? The exact same people who fetishize pagan Vikings are the same people saying this stuff about the Aztecs, which is insanely ironic. But of course, one group are white, one group are not. So when Vikings do similar things, that's not a big deal, I guess. They're really cool and based. But when Aztecs do it, oh yeah, they deserve just, you know, to be eradicated by like generations of Spanish settlers. So let's get into this article because it is really good. The Spanish conquest of the Americas was one of the most brutal episodes in human history. Entire cultures of American natives were suppressed and enslaved by the Spanish conquistadors on an incessant quest for precious metals and other material wealth. The devastation wrought upon the natives was so great that some Spaniards felt what they were doing violated God's will and was naturally and morally wrong, but they were vastly outnumbered. The majority saw it as their right, duty, and privilege to conquer and subject these millions of people to Spanish rule. Since they were trying to justify their case to sovereigns and a public that were thousands of miles away, they had to convey their reports regarding the natives in a favorable light. This often resulted in grossly exaggerated or even outright false reports regarding the behavior and customs of the natives, the conquistadors were eager to prove what they were perpetuating on the natives was in fact completely justified and acceptable. As a result, the Spanish conquistadors dehumanized and demeaned the natives in their accounts of the conquest with the goal of making their actions seem justified and morally correct. One of the major claims that Spaniards made to dehumanize the Amerindians Indians to a distant Spanish audience was a myriad of declarations creating the perception that the vast majority, if not all of the natives encountered on the voyages were in fact cannibals. Hernan Cortes, leader of the Spanish conquest of the Mexica in present day Mexico made many mentions of cannibalism in his letters back to Spain. He remarked that the natives of Zotla are all cannibals of which I send your majesty no evidence because it's so infamous. However, Anthony Pagden, editor of Cortez's letters, takes note that there is no conceivable way Cortez could have encountered any cannibalistic tribes on any of his voyages, 
with the only consumption of human flesh he could have potentially witnessed being highly ritualized partial cannibalism taking place after sacrifices of enemy warriors. Thus, it appears here that Cortez willingly acknowledged that he had zero tangible evidence to back up his claims, but also that he felt no need to produce any to the king based on hearsay, as the cannibalism of the natives was apparently so well known throughout the world. Pedro de Leon was one of the conquistadors under Francisco Pizarro in Peru, taking part in the conquest of the Incas. He reported at one point witnessing in the pots of the Indians some human feet and hands that could be seen amongst the meat they took out to eat. Leon did make an important point regarding the perception of some Spaniards of the desire of the natives to change though. He acknowledged that while cannibalism had existed in Peru for centuries, when the Incas had risen to power they had devoted themselves to ridding the native areas of the savagery of cannibalism. Later he made another interesting point in his writings. He acknowledged as noted above that the Incas no longer practiced cannibalism However, he realized why so many Spaniards would include such falsehoods and lies regarding the eating of human flesh. Leon surmised in part two of his chronicle that the Spaniards lied so as to hide our own shortcomings and justify the ill treatment they have suffered at our hands. Thus, the conquistadors themselves acknowledge at times that they twisted the truth or were blatantly dishonest in their representation of natives, all in the quest to justify their actions against native people. So it just goes on to say that Columbus also lied about this in his letters, but going on to Cortez a bit more because he's more relevant to the Aztecs. So um, even more examples can be found in the accounts of the conquistadors from Cortez, reporting that native warriors use roasted babies as provisions, to Amerigo Vespucci reporting that the natives eat very little flesh unless it's that of humans. Vespucci and Bernal Diaz del Castillo even went to such extremes as reporting that they had seen native butcher shops with human meat. While there were documented cases of cannibalism among the Aztecs, it was in a highly ritualized ceremonies of war captives after sacrifices. Beyond this, however, there was very little verifiable evidence that any of the natives the Spaniards encountered practiced cannibalism on a routine basis. This naturally raises the question, why the Spaniards were so insistent on portraying the natives as cannibals? There are a couple different explanations for this, but they all essentially relate. Marvin Lunafeld summarizes that accusations of cannibalism by primitive people were a device to make conquest and exploitation morally legitimate, and that men who ate other men were never thought to be quite human. Kirkpatrick Sale, among other scholars, believes that the Spaniards found what they wanted to find and took any suspect at best evidence that existed in support of their preconceived notions and simply extrapolated and exaggerated. Sale further notes that it, of peoples whose lands were seen as increasingly desirable, it was always convenient to regard foreign populations as inferior. How positively fortuitous that then they provide evidence of their inferiority three times a day with every meal. By portraying the natives as primitive savages, or not even full human beings who took pleasure in eating other people, the Spaniards had a much easier time adjusting to the idea these people deserved conquering, and what they were doing was just and right. So why I like that article so much, and I like that scholarship on this, is that it relates so much to all those tweets, doesn't it? Like, all these people saying, I want to play as the good guys, I want to play as the Spanish conquistadors, killing loads of native people, because they were barbarians, they ate people, you know, they did all these terrible things, so they deserved it, they deserved to be killed. And it's just interesting how that's still being used to justify racism, because, like I said, if you go into the history, you know that a lot of the conquistadors falsified their accounts to get more funding, get more standing, like, like a lot of these expeditions had to be funded by people. And also something to remember, I'm not saying the Spanish were good, but there were eventually laws passed to try and protect the native groups from conquistadors, from the Europeans, being terrible to them by the Spanish crown. I'm not saying the Spanish crown were good, but like they're saying, if you started trying to depict it more accurately, like if you went into the native communities with more peaceful intention and told the people back at home what it was like without depicting them as, you know, savage barbarians who have butcher shops of human meat, then you might not have been able to justify all the plundering that these people did. And something people need to remember as well is a lot of these conquistadors, like Cortes himself, 
they weren't really people from wealthy families. They were out to seek their fortune. They're just like the pirates who would come later in the 1700s, right? So a lot of these people were looking for land, looking for a new country for themselves, looking to be rulers. And in later years, they actually fought revolts against the Spanish crown because they thought now, we are the rulers of these new countries, like the Pizarro brothers in Peru, for example. So trusting the words of people like this, like a lot of these people do, is insane, but seeing them as good people is crazy. Just for fighting the Aztecs and just removing everything they did, removing how they treated all the natives, removing, literally they created racism in this period. Like modern day racism spawns out of the colonization of the new world and also the Spanish actions against Muslims and Jews back in Iberia, right? That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about this terrible period of history which spawned a racial hierarchy which in many ways still exists today and causes so many issues and these people are saying yeah the people who invented that they're good people again absolutely far-right mindset but on elon musk twitter not only do these people feel okay saying this with their actual faces on twitter accounts they get loads of likes and they're the top comments as well like that is what elon musk twitter is absolute cesspool now one more point I want to address is a lot of these people saying, you know, Aztecs were terrible. So the Spanish were good because they fought the Aztecs. So there's an article I read on Manchester Historian called The Fall of the Aztecs. Why did some natives ally with the Spanish during their conquest of Central America by Amber Reed? It took 100 years to build, but only two to be taken down. In its day, the Aztec Empire was the most powerful force in Mesoamerica. Now, despite the advances it made, its legacy has been almost entirely destroyed by Spanish conquistadors. Hernan Cortes and his men rocked the Aztec Empire from its valley to its peaks. Landmarks were destroyed, resources drained, and over half of the people exterminated by smallpox in two short years. Survivors were crammed into encomiendas, facing slave-like conditions, which made even the Spanish monarchs grimace. Like I said, so brutal, even the Spanish monarchy tried to pass laws to end this system and it's also where the racial hierarchy of the new world was created as well knowing their fate today it's hard to imagine why any natives would choose to ally with the spanish to these natives however alliance was opportunity an opportunity to rise fight and snatch autonomy from the aztec overlords before 1519 the aztecs firmly gripped mesoamerica the core of the empire was tenochtitlan the capital city which dominated militarily and economically from the 14th century a triple alliance had been the foundation of the empire, consisting of the states of Tenochtitlan, Tlacopan, and Texcoco. Gradually, Tenochtitlan expanded, absorbing the other two and consolidating power through tax and tyranny. Dramatic cultural differences between Central America and Renaissance Europe make it easy to forget that there are many similarities. Tenochtitlan was progressing to a similar degree to their European counterparts. They had constructed an artificial island around the city, dam systems to purify the salt water for drinking and to prevent floods. Their art was complex, taking full advantage of the precious materials around them like gold and silver. However, the empire was not without its cracks. Tenoctic land interfered relentlessly with Tetsukoko's politics, significantly damaging the Triple Alliance, which had brought them together. Moreover, the brutal foundations of the empire bled into every level of society. Activities now considered torturous were commonplace in every area, from religious ritual to military training, with human sacrifice and everyday occurrence, the Aztecs were a people stained in their own blood. Few tribes had the power to resist this, but not all were helpless. When Cortes and the Spanish arrived in Tlaxcala in August 1519, the Tlaxcalans fought for two weeks before being subdued. Despite the excessive weaponry the Spanish were initially equipped with, they proved themselves worthy warriors and thus Cortes proposed an alliance to overthrow the Aztecs. They were initially hesitant, an alliance with the Spanish was very desirable on the surface, as well as Cortes' promises of a tax exemption and preservation of their land, things the Aztecs had exploited them for mercilessly. They were presented with the opportunity to remove their main rival for good. They would gain autonomy and Spanish military technology would ensure it was maintained. So in exchange for the resources of the Native Americans, the Spanish repaid them with an epidemic of smallpox, and this also destroyed most of the Aztec records, making it difficult to confirm the death toll, but it's estimated that millions of natives fell. The Aztec Empire was finally stamped out on August 13th, 1521, when Tenochtit land was captured, the devastation left by the attacks, the epidemic, and the slave-like conditions many natives were subject to once the Spanish held dominance in Mesoamerica, 
raise many questions of why the alliance was ever appealing to the natives. Obviously, that's a more shortened history, but it's something colonialists have always done. They divide and rule. They exploit local tensions between different tribes and make them fight against each other. And then once that's done, they still rule over them brutally. Like the natives who sided with Cortes weren't then suddenly treated like Spaniards. They weren't put into high positions of government. The Spaniards eventually didn't make any distinction between native groups. And like I said, to say these people were the good guys just displays a total ignorance of history. But when Americans celebrate Christopher Columbus for hundreds of years, despite being just an absolute monster, probably not surprising people come out of the woodwork to say, oh yeah, the Aztecs were terrible. The conquistadors were good. I want to play as the good guys who side with the other native groups against the Aztecs. Let's just ignore everything they did afterwards, including to the people they fought with against the Aztecs, right? These people who fought with the Spaniards against the Aztecs were not spared from what the Spaniards did to the Aztecs. They destroyed all these cultures. They put them into a brutal working system that even the Spanish crown thought was too far. And the Catholic church obviously treated these native groups like total garbage. The only way, like Matt Walsh and others, if you think this is good, is if you are a fascist, right? And also, like it was saying in that article, like how advanced these people were in many different ways, and just because they did something which is pretty brutal to us as Europeans, same with the Vikings, it's justification to just do whatever you want. And like those articles are saying, the scholarly articles, a lot of these Spanish people made stuff up. They made loads of stuff up about the natives so they could justify doing absolutely horrendous things to them and not have as big a backlash by the Spanish crown because people thought like these natives deserved it. And like I said, if you have any interest in history and you read about this period, and even if you think like, you know, what the Aztecs did to the other tribes were horrible. And that's totally fine because yeah, war is brutal. War between native groups was also brutal. But to then see a force of Europeans come in, basically doing whatever they want, doing absolutely like terrible things that if you read in detail will make you sick. And not only that, they bragged about it in diaries. They bragged about it in letters. They didn't think what they were doing was bad a lot of them. They thought the natives deserved this. And you read all of that and you come away with it thinking, oh God, like, you know, those natives really deserve this treatment because human sacrifice or whatever, you're just playing into the frame and these people originally did to justify these things. And like I said, what type of person do you have to be to read this history and think what the Spanish did was good? It just shows you these people would be the conquistadors. They don't think the Aztecs are human. They don't think these native groups are human. If you think the Spanish conquistadors were heroes, if you think you know European settlers of any part of America were heroes for wiping out like millions of people in the name of capitalism and colonialism, then yeah, you are a fascist. And people crying about it when I tell them that are just like so delusional that they think this. So anyway, that is it for the video, all based on like one game announcement, but I thought it was interesting to talk about like the actual history and how these myths get spread. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.